So to properly demonstrate what I mean with the uh, enhanced assembly and the um, stack booleans as opposed to the batch booleans, uh, I figure I'll just build a, a, a simple example here and show you the difference between the two. So we're going to take a look at the uh, standard standard assembly that comes with mop booleans to demonstrate the differences between these two. And there's a really simple way to see this just with a basic example. So if I have this, this shape is my base. Like I'm going to make a subtractive cut from it using this box. And now let's say that I want to add some, some geometry inside of here and then later subtract more more from that that's not really possible with the standard assembly because uh, without making a separate mop boolean that sits on top of this one or just using some regular mesh items there's no way to stack an operation that goes base subtract union subtract that kind of thing because the order of operations in here holds that we merge do all the unions all the subtractions all the intersections so you get one layer of each kind of effect that I can show you real quick what I mean. If I just go ahead and create a cylinder and I want to put him inside of here, you know, as a separate mesh item, he's fine. Uh, but if I try to put him into the um, as a modifier stack, you know, he gets subtracted away because the unions happened first and then we did the subtractions. So now I'm going to show you what this looks like with the new setup. Okay, so now let's look at that same situation with the new assembly. So let me make another box and put him into the first subtraction. So we have the same, same result. You know, we have the square cut out of the round thing. Now I want to put a piece of geometry inside of here. So I go ahead make my cylinder and I position that where I want it to be uh, and now I can can integrate that into this tree by just cutting it out and putting it into the next union that comes after the subtraction so I'll drop it into that slot now it's in there. So now we have a subtracted hole with geometry added inside of that hole. And you can see that it's all clipped and cut and I even screwed up and had it stick out the back. But you get the idea. Actually, the better way to fix that, I guess, would be to just grab the base, grab this, pull it out. So anyway, that being that case, now if I grab this cylinder and I'll make another copy of it because I want to use it as a subtractive example. So I'll shrink it down, lengthen it out, pull it forward so it cuts through the original mesh and the and the union chunk. So all I got to do is clip that out and look for the next subtraction after that next subtraction after that un that union which is here. I paste it in there. So now we have that. So this is how operations can stack. And this is something that doesn't really fly with the original assembly. And uh, it turns out that this is what I always wanted. So uh, I hope you can find this, uh, well, I hope you can fold this into your workflow. I think once you get going with this and you realize the power of being able to stack things on top of one another, you really do start seeing a lot of great uses for it. So uh, that's all I'm gonna say about it. Thanks for watching and uh, check out the new assembly. Oh, uh, one last thing. Uh, in those example videos, you saw me doing a lot of cutting and pasting between different mesh operators. That's just the way that I like to work. Um, that by no means means that you have to do it that way. This will this new assembly works with all of the old commands, all of the old hotkeys, pie menus, all of that. So, you know, however you prefer to work with mop booleans, you can continue to do that.